All right, it's time for this franchise to go back into the dirt. We'll dig your bones up in like 20 years. So Jurassic World Dominion is the third film in the Jurassic World trilogy and the sixth and final film in the Jurassic Park saga. I've been a fan of Jurassic Park ever since I first saw the movie in theaters and I have been a fan of most of this franchise with the exception of the last one. That is one big pile of shit. And I really did like Jurassic World when it came out. I thought it was a nice return to form for the franchise. I thought that it was a very sensical modernization of that concept. Is it silly? Is it stupid and nonsensical at times? Absolutely, but it was a lot of fun and I think it's easily the best sequel. So when Colin Trevorrow was coming back to do this third and presumably final film, whenever they announced they were getting the cast of the original trilogy back and they were going to converge them with the cast of this Jurassic World trilogy, I had a lot of hope for this film. I had hoped that they were gonna take a lot of people's criticisms of Fallen Kingdom and apply that to this last movie. Bringing the original crew back would hopefully bring some of that tone or some of that magic from that original film. And unfortunately, after seeing the film last night and sitting on it since then, I can tell you that this is now the second film in this franchise that I definitively do not like. I need to rewatch Fallen Kingdom to see if I like this the least, but even if it is better than Fallen Kingdom, it's not by much. So starting off with the positives for Jurassic World Dominion, I think that the dinosaurs themselves, for being mostly CGI, do look really good. You're never gonna quite capture that awe-inspiring magic of the dinosaurs that we got in that first film back in the 90s, but for what we get here for the expanded scope, for the expanded species, and even the genetically modified species that we've gotten in this Jurassic World trilogy, I think that the CGI is advanced enough to where you can can't necessarily point out the fact that it's CGI. You can stack this up against a lot of those early effects, and even though they're not as impressive because you know it's computer, it still is escapism. It's effective in that way. There is a lot of varying action sequences throughout this movie, so if you're somebody that just showed up for the dino carnage and all of the action sequence chaos, there's probably going to be a lot in this movie that you're going to enjoy. Even though I have a lot of thoughts that I'm going to be getting into in my negative section regarding how these characters were used, I did enjoy seeing the original characters back with Sam Neill, Laura Dern, and Jeff Goldblum. There's just something neat about having that trilogy of people back, that dynamic between them. Even if it wasn't utilized near as well as it was in the first film, that little bit of nostalgia did work for me. And outside of our returning cast, I thought that DeWanda Wise as Kayla was a great character in this film. I can honestly say she's probably my favorite character in this movie. She's a scene stealer. She's very charismatic. She molds right into the dynamic between all six of these returning characters from these two trilogies. And she was a standout for me. And of all of the subplots and story directions that they chose to go with in this movie, most of which I will be critical on. The one that I thought was actually very effective was this bit of a mirror between Bryce Dallas Howard's character and the Raptor Blue. There's this theme of motherhood where both the cloned girl who is now basically the surrogate daughter of Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard, as well as the new baby Raptor that is has been born by Blue are both kidnapped. And that's one of the inciting incidents that kicks off this movie. And the journey that they go on, Chris Pratt trying to to reunite this raptor with Blue, the one raptor that he really cares for, and Bryce Dallas Howard kind of taking that motherly role, trying to get her daughter back. I thought that that was a nice and creative way to kind of mirror the journeys and the emotions between humans and animals. But unfortunately, every other story that they decided to go with in this movie absolutely baffles me on how the hell they made that choice. If you don't want to know any detail whatsoever of the plot of this movie, then earmuff it until you see me edit to another scene, but honestly, this is the type of movie where I really don't even think spoiler alert even applies. The basic plot of this film is that, like it was kicked off at the end of Fallen Kingdom, dinosaurs have been unleashed upon Earth, and now they are traveling across the globe, and they are living among us. And there is this corporation called Biosyn that has created this little area in the world that is going to be used as something of a sanctuary to where they can try to slowly relegate all of these dinosaurs to this area so that they can live free and safely away from humans. Except, of course, the ones that can fucking fly. 
But unfortunately, somehow this genetic modification has made its way into locusts. You have locusts that are the size of small poodles that are now wiping out all of the food supply on Earth. So you have the original trilogy characters that are going to this corporation to try to figure out what is going on with the Earth's food supply. And you have the Jurassic World characters that are also heading to this corporation to try to save the kidnapped clone girl as well as the baby raptor. And that is how we get all these characters together. How the fuck do you have the storyline that you set up deliberately at the end of the last film to where dinosaurs are finally unleashed out of the park and we quite literally now have a Jurassic world? How do you have that set up for humans to now quite literally be facing their mortality of their species, fighting for the future of the human race against dinosaurs out in their world? And you sideline all of that shit to the background for almost the entire movie and talk to us about animal cruelty, food supplies, and giant bugs. I didn't walk into this movie with a whole lot of expectations, and I did not like a lot of the decisions, including the way that they left off that movie in Fallen Kingdom. But if that's the direction that we were going, I said, fine, we're finally gonna get a Jurassic World. There's a lot of cool things you could do with that concept. Is it gonna be post-apocalyptic? Are they gonna go in kind of like this Dawn of the Planet of the Apes route to where it's gonna be very much about these two factions of species and maybe have a really introspective conversation on that of man versus animal and who's right, who deserves this planet is one more important than the other, anything like that. But no, I bought my ticket so that I could see giant locusts and the wheat supply of the world getting eaten. That is not what the fuck I go to a Jurassic Park movie for, and I'm willing to bet you're the same. I am all for walking into a movie and being given a story or some subplots that I was not expecting, especially if they are good or they are captivating or they're really clever in a way that I, not a Hollywood writer, would not have thought of. But when you have this that is just, it's literally packaged for you from the last film, a concept that is made for a final film, and you just sideline all of that, overcomplicate it and overconvolute the fuck out of it by trying to be way more clever than you should be with this concept, you destroy the entire setup of this movie. There's a reason why none of the trailers have hinted at any of these storylines. They're just dinosaur chaos, dinosaur being in cities, pterodactyls tearing down planes, and that's because that's what we came for. That is what we're buying our tickets for, is dinosaurs living among us and shit's about to go down. That plot line in and of itself, dinosaurs living among us out in the world, what the fuck are we going to do? That is more than enough storyline to motivate both of these factions of characters to get together for one final story. You don't have to write anything else. It's right there. And so because they went with all of these extra plot lines and motivations and subplots to try to sensically get these people together, they end up making it make zero sense whatsoever that the original trilogy's characters are even involved in this situation in the first place. Place. It makes zero fucking sense that they are even involved or they are even there and it sticks with you the entire movie. And unfortunately, that completely disassembles the intended nostalgia. The entire motivation of original trilogy fans to really get excited for this movie is we're finally getting all these characters back. But when you just shove them in here and it makes absolutely no sense, that nostalgia is clouded if not destroyed because you're sitting there the whole movie thinking it's nice to see them. But why the fuck are they here? And unfortunately, it doesn't help that the writing for the dialogue of these characters, really all six of them, but namely the original trilogy characters, is just not on par. It's something that to where they're like these jokey caricatures of their previous selves. I made a promise we would bring her home. You made a promise to a dinosaur. Yeah. What? You have Alan Grant that is kind of doing these little modern age movie quips that don't make a whole lot of sense. Laura Dern is essentially there just to be there and they even give her another sequence where it's like, hey Blondie, go push that button down that hallway. We'll stay here and radio and tell you what to do. And Goldblum is just here just to give his Goldblum lines. And they're not on the level of iconic or snarky or hilarious that they were in the original film. They're just kind of quirky and really try hard funny. And for the love of God, can we please get rid of the trope of the bitchy, angsty teenage girl that doesn't want to listen to anybody and causes all of these problems that eventually have to be rectified throughout the movie? Because every time you guys do that, it's impossible to sympathize with that character and everybody who's a parent just immediately dislikes her. Moving on from all of that, there is plenty of action in this movie, but I would say that the magic 
has been gone for a while and is certainly omitted from this movie. There was something special about those early Jurassic Park films, namely the first one to where they weren't gigantic and bombastic and just really overblown action sequences. I mean, you have the T-Rex that's taking out these people inside of a car where you mostly just see the side of his face. You have raptors chasing kids in this little tight kitchen. You have a couple of chase scenes and things like that. But this movie is just so huge in the scope that you kind of lose a little bit of that magic. So even though it's cool to see CGI monsters doing things on screen, there was no action sequence or a sequence that's meant to be tense that really hit. There was a cool fight scene between some dinosaurs in like the last 15 minutes, but at that point, it's kind of more like a Godzilla, King of the Monsters style scene than it really feels like a Jurassic Park scene. And the weirdest thing about it is even if you do like these action sequences, the dinosaurs almost feel like a side character or like a background noise element in their own franchise. Like the, it's all more about the espionage and all of the nefarious plans of this corporation, which surprise, surprise is evil. Never seen that before in a Jurassic Park movie. And even the locusts and all of that, it just, it takes all of the focus away from the dinosaurs, which is the fucking reason why we're watching the movie. Uh, now, now eventually you do plan to have dinosaurs on your, on your dinosaur tour, right? Now, don't get me wrong, this was a mildly enjoyable experience. This is not a movie that I hated watching. I was perfectly fine. I didn't walk out mad, but the more I think about it, the more I'm just confused and disappointed with how much potential this concept really had for this epic final movie. If you're going to sell it off of final, if you're going to sell it off of the nostalgia of bringing these old characters and having them interact with the new characters, you better bring it with the storytelling. And it just felt like the storytelling was the last priority. It was just nostalgia manipulation and very generic modern blockbuster movie making that just loses all of the magic and all of what worked for those original Jurassic Park films. So all in all, guys, this was a disappointment. It wasn't a crushing disappointment since my expectations weren't so high, but this could have been much, much better than what it was. There is going to be an audience for this. If you just want dumb dinosaur fun, you're probably going to enjoy this more than I did. If you want anything else beyond that, you're going to walk out scratching your head and thinking of so many other ways they could have done this story much more effectively. So can't really recommend that you see this in theaters. If you're a fan of the franchise, just check it out online. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please click over here for my playlist of all of my other 2022 new release movie reviews. And I'm also going to put my most recent horror tier list up here if you're a fan of horror. So check those out. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share this video and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything in the future. And as always, guys, remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.